So the topic of this and the next few sessions is asset and basis. <coughs> I feel your pain. <laughs> Acid and basis and uh, pH. And that is actually a uh, really important pH because the pH, and obviously we will discuss uh, exactly what it is, the pH very often dictates um, whether your experiment is successful or not. So acids and bases, uh, you, all, you are all familiar with the term of uh, acid uh, and base. There have been, however, uh, some different uh, definitions of these things. One of these definitions was done by the Swedish uh, chemist Brunstedt. And Brunstedt said that an acid is basically, no, I shouldn't say basically in this case, because it's an acid. Acid is a proton donor. And the base is a proton acceptor. And it was quite a, a, a new and revolutionary concept from the previous one uh, where it wasn't really defined as, 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 as such. Uh, there is, however, um, a slightly different definition. I don't know whether you've heard that. The Lewis definition. Are you familiar with the Lewis definition of an acid? The Lewis definition says that an acid is a pro oh no it's not it's an electron pair quite important, electron pair acceptor and the base is an electron pair donor. But we use, and, and this, this definition becomes quite useful when we are working in an environment that does not contain water. But usually this, hap this doesn't happen too often in biosciences. So usually our working environment is, is water. So let's just simply have a look at a typical acid. Uh, for example, HCl, hydrochloric acid. And as the name suggests, it is an acid. Why is it an acid? Because it can give off a proton. So it can dissociate into a proton and a chloride ion. And hydrochloric acid is actually a very strong acid. Which means that this dissociation into proton and chloride ion is almost 100%. So almost total. Quite frequently, we indicate that we are working in, an, in a watery, in an aqueous uh, environment. <laughs> Can I help? That piece isn't working, so we're just moving down one. Oh, oh okay, sorry. So it looked quite a difficult operation that you performed there. So we can uh, indicate that we are working in, a, in an aqueous environment by just simply adding the subscript AQ, which stands for aqua. Uh, 
Um, but very often you find that people just simply don't bother with that. Why is hydrochloric acid actually such a strong acid? Because it fully dissociates. Why does it fully dissociate? Because it's a strong acid. <laughs> it's a sort of a circular argument, isn't it? Well, whether a substance is a strong acid or a weaker acid depends on the molecules that are involved in that. And if we look at the bond between the proton and the chloride, we will find that this bond is highly polarized. So very polar. And in a way, the chloride has a very, very huge affinity for the electrons. I want the electrons. And the proton basically says, or the, 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 the hydrogen basically says, well, I'm not too bothered. Um, if you really want to, yeah, OK, you can have it. Yeah. And here, the term electronegativity <laughs> plays a role. If something is very electronegative, it means that it really, really wants the electrons. And chloride is one of these elements that is highly electronegative. It wants the electrons in order to uh, reach its noble gas configuration. And the hydrogen is not too bothered. <coughs> if we have, um, for example, something like that, a CH bond, <coughs> Would you expect this to be highly polar, this bond? No. Lisa goes like that. No. Because they are both fairly similar in electronegativity, the carbon and the hydrogen. So there's no real polarization there. And therefore, usually a CH bond is not polar, and it's not an acid. So it's the electronegativity that makes something a strong acid or a weak acid. Now, what happens if we actually put hydrochloride into water? HCl plus water. <coughs> and I write it like that. <clears throat> it's not just because I'm too lazy to complete the arrow. Uh, this just indicates that it's almost 100%. It's, it's really 99.999999% dissociated. So we can really say it's 100% dissociated. So what actually happens is that we get the chloride ion plus the proton. And usually, you will never encounter a naked proton. You will never encounter a naked ion, per se. So in this case, what we find is that we form something like that, H3O+. Although this is not, this is not really correct. What really happens is that both the chloride and the proton are surrounded by a large network of water molecules. So instead of H3O+, plus, we could write basically HNO n half minus 1 
plus or something like that, which indicates that there is lots and lots of water molecules around this, uh, this naked proton. So we mustn't forget that naked chlorides, naked ions in general, and naked protons don't exist. And some people actually suggest, and that's a, almost a radical idea, they suggest that everything is actually dictated by the shape of these uh, water clouds. So the formation of a protein, of, of the three-dimensional structure of a protein is doing the job because it affects the water around it. Whether this is true or not, I don't know. But uh, it, it is certainly a, a, an interesting thought that might explain a few observations that people have. <coughs> now, when we dissociate water, uh, blah, blah, dissociate hydrochloric acid, we can also see a certain stoichiometry. This means if I have one mole per liter of hydrochloric acid, and this dissociates in water into H plus and Cl minus, how much of the H plus do I get in terms of concentration? One mole per liter, exactly. How much of the chloride? One mole per liter as well, exactly. Yeah? So we have a stoichiometry. In this case, it gives us a ratio of one to one. This doesn't have to be the case always because we can have what is called a diprotic acid. <coughs> a typical diprotic acid would be H2SO4, so sulfuric acid, which again is a strong acid and it dissociates into two protons plus the sulfate ion. Now, if I have a concentration of one mole per liter, and it completely disso uh, dissociates, how much of the sulfate ion, how much of this guy do I have? Then, no? one mole per liter, yeah, one molar. How much of the protons do I have? Aha, I've got a two molar solution, right? Because each mole of sulfuric acid produces two moles of protons. That's quite an important concept. And uh, sometimes people say to me, but uh, I just have one molar solution of it. Yeah, but you need to bear in mind that it produces two mole of protons. OK, so obviously that's fairly straightforward. Now, what is a base? Um, a base basically accepts protons according to Pronsted. And if that happens in water, 
hydroxide ions are produced. So, for example, a typical base would be Na NH3 plus H2. And what this ammonia does is it, it accepts a proton from the water and it produces NH3, well, NH4, I should say, plus, plus OH minus. And that is what's left over from water when we add a typical base. Another form of a base is where we have NaOH. And if we add this to water, we get Na plus plus OH minus. Exactly. Yeah? <coughs> So in both cases, what we see is that a base actually produces OH minus. And again, we have the stoichiometry. If we have, for example, one molar NaOH, we end up with one molar sodium uh, ions and one molar hydroxide ions. Happy with that? I think it's not terribly conceptually difficult, this, this, this stuff. It gets more interesting when we actually want to do a little bit more quantitative stuff. And to do so, people have invented what is called a pH scale. And the definition is the pH of a solution equals the negative logarithm to the base of 10, but usually this 10 is ignored, the negative logarithm of the proton concentration. And this proton concentration must be in the form of mole per liter. Now, this is something for connoisseurs to roll that on their tongue. It's like, uh, you know, a delicious meal. There's a lot in this equation. pH equals negative logarithm to the basis of 10 of the proton concentration. Mm, mm, mm. It gives you, gives you a lovely aftertaste, you know. What does this actually mean? Okay. Let's say we have a solution of 0 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. We bang that into water <coughs> how much of the protons have we got in this case? Loud? 0 0.1 molar protons, exactly. And, of course, 0 0.1 molar chloride ions as well. But they are not really hugely contributors. 
Now, can we calculate the pH of this solution? And the answer is, yes, of course we can, because otherwise I wouldn't do that with you. So we can say pH equals minus log of the concentration, and in this case it is 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Why doesn't he write any units? Why am I not writing any units here? Has he completely forgotten about his, you know, the mantra, never do anything without units? Where are the units? pH doesn't need units. Yes and no. You are right. But it's a little bit more sinister. The answer is, whenever you have a logarithm to whatever base this is, a logarithm can't deal with units. End of story. There are no units when you have a logarithm. And we will come to something like that shortly before Christmas when I show you a different logarithm. But in this case, the unit is sort of hidden in this one here when I say it has to be mole per liter. Oh, yeah, it's lovely. Oh, I feel, I feel very tranquil and uh, <laughs> relaxing. Ma ma maybe we should do that in the lecture. Yeah, having, having soothing music? No, 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 no. Then you are completely gone. It's not good. <coughs> okay, so. Obviously, when we are dealing with pH and then also pOH, you need to learn a little bit about logarithms. Quick show of hands, who has done logarithms at school? Hands up. Oh, it's quite a fair amount of people. There are lots of good tutorials on logarithms, how you deal with logarithms. But if people want, I can do uh, later on a little bit uh, about logarithms, how you, how you do calculations. But very often, you don't have to worry too much about it because your calculator does it for you. So when you put in logarithm of 0 0.1 into your calculator, you probably have to do it with brackets. What does that give you? So it gives you minus 1, right? So log of 0 0.1 gives you minus 1. And then you have a negative sign. So you have negative of minus 1, and that gives you what? You said plus 2. Plus 1. Ah, OK. Whew. So the pH, in this case, equals 1. And this means, for people who know how to read that, Actually, the proton concentration is 0 0.1 mole per liter in this case. Using the logarithm and this pH thing is actually quite uh, an, 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 a nice way of avoiding problems with too many zeros. So, for example, if you have a solution that contains... 0 0.0001 mole per liter of protons. It's very easy to lose one of the zeros.
But if I write this as pH equals minus log of 0 0.0001, what does that give me? Log of 0 0.001, 0 0001, you see I'm, I'm running into problems already. What does that give me? What does it give me? What does it give me? What does it give me? Log of 0 0.0001. Minus 4, thank you. I know what you meant. So that is minus 4. Minus times minus is plus. So here the pH equals 4. Yeah? And just for those of you who are interested in the logarithm business, you can write this one here as 10 to the power of minus 4. Yeah? 10 to the power of minus 4. And you see minus 4, <coughs> minus 4 here. Ah. Yeah? That is basically the foundation of logarithms in this case. Okay. Are you happy with that? Yeah? This P this P um, why does it is it P H and some people argue that this has been lost in, in history, why we use a P there. The explanation that I have is that this P potentially, <laughs> potentially stand, stands for pondus, which means weight. So in a way, it could be interpreted as the weight of the protons. But it's not a, a, a typical weight, it's the sort of, you know what I mean. Actually, you have this pondos in a different word as well. Something that you use every day. Where? What do you use every day? A lot of things, hey? When you pay a pound, exactly. This is a pound, a pound of hydrogen, if you like. It's not a pound, but, uh, you know. And that is just simply because this pound used to be an abbreviation for, actually, a pound of silver in the olden days. So you could buy a lot with a pound. Things have changed, unfortunately. But I'm, I'm, I'm digressing and uh, probably become um, political. We can do this P trick <coughs> <coughs> for other things as well. So, for example, we can I, uh, define POH. And you don't have to be a rocket surgeon to figure out what POH means. It is just simply negative logarithm to the basis of 10 of the OH minus concentration. And again, this one here is in mole per liter. So, if I have a 0 0.01 molar solution of NaOH, what would I get for the pOH? Do 
you are absolutely right. The pOH is 2. Why? Because I need to do pOH <coughs> equals minus log of 0 0.01. It's already in the right unit. I don't have to worry about that. This gives me negative 2 times negative minus times minus, and that gives me, bless you, plus 2. Yeah? So we can very easily calculate pH and pOH. And what you very often see is that people have introduced what is called this pH scale. The pH scale usually goes from where to where? It goes from, what's the starting point? Zero or one? One to 14. That's right. Now, this is the usual definition. <coughs> Can a pH be outside that range? Yes? Yes or no? Yes? Okay. What is the pH of a one molar hydrochloric acid? So pH equals minus log of 1. Log of 1 gives us 0. So we have pH equals 0. Not a big deal. pH is 0. There are certain substances that are even stronger. So, for example, what is a pH of a one molar sulfuric acid? Minus 0 0.3. Minus 0 0.3. You are absolutely right. pH equals minus log... And what do I have to write here? Two. Two, exactly, because one mole of sulfuric acid gives me two moles of protons. <laughs> yeah? And that actually gives me 0 0.301 something. And we have a minus here. So the pH becomes negative. Some people um, have expressed grave concern that the pH is all of a sudden negative. Panic! Oh my God, a negative pH! The world is coming to an end. Trump rules. Oh, sorry. Don't panic. It's fine. I mean, the negative pH is fine. Yeah? Don't worry about it. It can be negative. It's not a big deal. Okay? <coughs> now, is pH and pOH somehow related with each other. That would be really, really sexy. Well, I mean, in terms of biochemistry, wouldn't it? It could very well be that your definition of sexy and uh, 
a biochemist's definition of sexy are slightly <coughs> different, but in this case, I think uh, it would be really cool if we could, if we have one, we could immediately find out what the other one is. So, how could we try and figure that out? Well, let's take a very common substance. Actually, it is an incredibly dangerous substance. This is the substance that kills every single year many, many, many hundred thousands of people. Any idea what this is? Thank you. It is water. Exactly. So what we have is innocent water or as it is also advertised dihydrooxygen if you like. Now this dihydrooxygen is actually an acid. <coughs> but it's also a base. And what it does is, in an equilibrium reaction, and we will discuss what equilibrium reactions are in more details later on, it dissociates into <coughs> a proton and OH minus. So you see, it's sort of, it doesn't know exactly what it wants to be. It's a, what is called an amphiphilic molecule. It is a proton donor, and it also produces OH minus. So it's an acid base, or a basic acid, or you know, whatever you want to call it. Now when we put water, into water, we have this dissociation. And what we find is actually the concentration of protons in pure water is 1 times 10 eh. I've got this horrible thing again. Sorry, I need to figure out how to get rid of that. Yeah. 1 times 10 to the minus 7 mole per liter. Quick question. What is the concentration of the OH minus? You are absolutely right. It's exactly the same. 1 times 10 to the minus 7 mole per liter. Can you quickly calculate the pH of water? pH is 7. Minus log 10 to the minus 7 gives minus 7, negative 7. What's the POH? Is 7. Ha! Huh. pH and POH are the same in this case. What happens if we add them together? pH plus POH equals 14. And in this case, this 14 is the magic number. It's the answer to life, universe, and everything related to acid and bases. 
14. Please remember that. That's a very convenient way of converting pH into pOH. <coughs> we can even write something in a slightly different way. We can say, okay, we have H2O and it dissociates into H plus plus O my H O H minus. We are clear about it that it is not the naked ions, it's not the naked proton, it's not the naked O H minus, but we don't need to worry uh, too much about it. And we can actually put that into an equation. <coughs> and we can say, in the case of an equilibrium, when this equilibrium has established itself, and in water this is extremely fast, so this usually happens within nanoseconds, we can write the concentration of the protons times the concentration of the OH minus divided by the original concentration of the water, this is a constant. And it's usually abbreviated as KW. This is a constant, and it's always the same. <coughs> usually, because not a lot of the water is actually used People just simply ignore this part here. They say that doesn't really change a lot. That is sort of included in this KW here. And what we get from that is KW equals the proton concentration times the OH minus concentration. And we said 1 times 10 to the minus 7 mole per liter. And that here is the same. So Kw equals, what does that give? Exactly. Thank you very much. 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And this is actually, we can write this as 0 0.00000. I hope I got it right. Uh, one, sorry, not a four. Well, you see, it's very, very dangerous writing that because I easily lose a zero. So what I can do in this case, I can do again, do the PKW equals minus log of the KW. And that gives me, what number does that give me? 14. And because this is... So terribly exciting, or not, depending on how you see it. This PKW has a special name. PKW is called the iron product of water. And the reason why it's called that is pretty clear. It is the ions, the product of water. Sorry? No? Not water. Water. No water. 
Have you watched Harry Potter? That's different. That's different. Oh, I see. So not water. Oh, okay. Probably me as a, as a, as a, as a foreigner shouldn't, uh, you know, trying to attempt to do any, any funny accents. At least that is what they told me in Scotland. <coughs> <coughs> Mm -hmm. The punishment comes immediately. <laughs> Fair enough. So if you ever come across something that asks about the iron product of water, <laughs> PKW equals 14. Okay, are you happy with that? There are some other PKs, and we will discuss them next week. Um, because they make life so much easier when we have to write things. Now, before I want to stop for this session, for this particular session, I want to also introduce you to something bizarre, or rather, not so bizarre. We said water can be an acid or a base, an amphiphilic compound. What about when we take this compound, NH3? What is it? Ammonia. Ammonia. Exactly. And we put this in water. <coughs> First of all, what do we expect? N and H, the electronegativity is slightly different, but then it's not dramatically different. <coughs> Would you expect it to be a strong acid? No? So it usually would not easily get rid of one of the H's here. Instead, what happens is it pinches one of the hydrogens or the protons from the water becomes NH4 plus plus OH minus. Okay? So, what is NH3? Acid or base? Sorry? Both. It's a base. You're absolutely right. Who is the proton donor? Water. So that's the acid. <coughs> Great. So let's look at NH4 plus plus water. What happens? Discuss. What do you think happens? If you said we get NH3 plus H3O plus, then you are absolutely right. What is NH4 plus? Base or acid? It's the acid. What is the water? It's the base. So we have a really funny situation where we have NH3 here being the base and NH4 plus being the acid. 
Yeah? You see that? And a case like that is called a conjugate acid base pair. In a conjugate acid base pair, they only differ. They only differ by one proton. By one proton. That's the only difference. So, From these three, is there a conjugate acid base pair? Say loud. So you say this one here. Why do you think this is a conjugate acid base pair? So the yeah. only difference between these two things, you are absolutely, it's Alex. Yeah, Alex. Yeah. Alex is absolutely right. The only difference is this one proton. Do we have a one difference proton in here? No. Do we have a one difference proton in here? No. So the only conjugate base pair is this guy here. What about OH minus and H2O? Is that a conjugate uh, acid base pair? Yes or yes? <laughs> I didn't give you a lot of options. Why is it? Because there's a one proton difference. There's one proton difference. OH minus and H3O plus. Of course, this is an acid. This is a base. Is it a conjugate base pair? No? Why not? It's more than one proton, right? So bear that in mind. It has to be one. Happy with that? Fantastic. I suggest we have a comfort break, five, six minutes, and then we do a few calculations, okay?